Hello again, I'm John Terzak, and this lesson will answer the question of how to make a rabbit goat relish, or in this case, it will be a sweet purple onion relish. And I'm going to make two, three versions of how you can go about and approach making this type of relish. This has a long history of tradition in its preparation in France. It's made with either shallots or onions or shallots and onions. You can use purple onion, white onion, or shallots, or all three together if you want. And the, the concept of this relish, or this sauce, or mayonnaise, or dressing, however you want to go about approaching it, is to spice up the food that it's being served with. The ingredients are all here. Purple onion, which I have a half of a purple onion already minced. We're going to use one whole big purple onion for this particular recipe. Some basil, dill, fresh cilantro, chopped garlic, some dry sherry, some capers, scallions, a little bit of red pepper, and some white wine vinegar, and maybe some balsamic vinegar. So I'm going to start by dicing the purple onion, like I did this other half before we... This, of course, is cut in half, this onion is, and I'm not cutting the onion all the way through. As you can see, I hope. Now, could I use a French knife for this? Absolutely. But I can use I could use a roast knife and do this correctly. So we got ourselves some pretty fine small dice. Now, what would you serve this relish with? I think we got enough onion right there. Let's add this to our onion. What would you serve this with? Let's chop the herbs while I'm telling you that. Um, by itself, raw or warmed up slightly in a little bit of olive oil on top of a steak or next to any kind of steak or grilled or sautéed meats, for starters. Okay, there's our... We got a, probably a total of a quarter of a cup or a third of a cup of all three of those mixed herbs together there. Let's put a little bit of green onion in there, chopped fine. Keeping in mind that we don't want the garnish ingredients to the onion to outsize the onion. The onion is the primary standout in this relish or dressing, however you end up approaching it. I'm going to show you, like I said, three approaches to this. First one is going to be a plain, straight, what I would call sweet purple onion relish. Okay, we got a couple of scallions there. Let's put about oh oh one two three. Let's put four teaspoons of fresh capers in there. Let's put a little bit of fresh red pepper in there for some color. Again, cutting it small. Doesn't matter, by the way, how fast you do this, as long as you do it correctly. I think at some point we all start out doing this fairly slowly. But you want to make these minced small. Again, so they don't outsize the onion. I think I'm going to switch this up to a bigger, a bigger bowl here. So let's get the red pepper in there. And let's put ourselves, oh, let's go two heaping teaspoons of fresh chopped garlic there. And now let's put, oh, I have about three or four tablespoons of dry sherry here. And let's put a little bit of white wine vinegar couple of teaspoons here. Do we want this to have a little bite? Yes, we do. And let's put some 
a couple of tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil in there for starters. And let's put a little bit of fresh ground black pepper in there. And let's put a little bit of salt. Let's put a little bit of sugar, like a half a teaspoon. We want to take the edge off of the sharpness of this. This by itself, you can make this sweeter if you want. You can call this a sweet purple onion relish also, depending on how much sugar you put in it and how sweet your onions are. You could just use straight up white Vidalia onions, which are a lot sweeter than the purples to begin with, if you wanted to. This is a guide for making this, is what I'm giving you. Let's give this a taste. Believe it or not, I like this one just the way it is right now. Could I put a little more sugar and a little more oil in it? I probably could. So first, let's start by putting this basic rabbit goat relish on a plate. So we can get a good look at that by itself. Now, let's take a little bit of this rabbit goat relish, put it in another bowl. This is a second version now. This is an option for you, and this is a way for me to show you that there's more than one way to skin a cat in the case of this particular uh, rabbit goat or, or the style of rabbit goat that you want. I'm going to put a little bit of mayonnaise in here, whether it's homemade, commercial, whatever you want to use, and I'm going to put... Mm, just for fun, let's use balsamic vinegar here. We'll put a splash of balsamic vinegar in here. And I'm going to put oh, a couple of tablespoons of heavy cream in here. Maybe one and a half for starters. And we're going to mix this. What we're making now is like a dressing. Or like a ravigo mayonnaise-ish kind of dressing. I got I made it a little too watery. So let's put the rest of this mayonnaise in to help tighten it up a little bit. So now we have a dressing, a rabbit goat dressing. This is another way to do it. Great with cucumbers, cold food, anything that you may put like a remoulade sauce on or anything along those lines. And now let's try another shot with making a straight up vinaigrette as almost as a, as a dressing with the rabbit goat. Then we'll have a rabbit goat vinaigrette. So let's put more olive oil in here. Oh, another quarter cup, three or four tablespoons. Let's put a little bit more white wine vinegar in here. A couple more teaspoons. And then let's give this a mix. Let's taste that while we're at it. This is fun. This is nice. I don't need to do anything else with this. Now we have a rabbit goat vinaigrette, if you will, you see, which is still maintains its uh, composition as a relish. So in this case, it's a relish vinaigrette. So we have a mayonnaise sauce, a straight a uh, relish rabbit goat and a rabbit goat vinaigrette. You make it the way you want in terms of the final adjustments and what you're going to use it with. This is like a general landscape that you might be able to view this as in terms of what is rabbit goat and what does it mean. There's many implications and here's three good examples.